Hey, so this is where I slept last night. It's um an abandoned kind of industrial building. Seems like it was uh, basically built, the roof put on, and the floor was never completed. And um, yeah, it's just empty. And the road's uh, just over there. So I was just biking by and saw it. It's kind of in this pretty, uh, pretty busy industrial area. It looks like there's kind of working buildings all, all around it. So it's kind of, I was pretty surprised that this place here and the doors are all open and the roof is solid. So, um, yeah, I stayed dry last night. That was really good. I was calling for rain kind of all night and I could hear it dripping, uh, but uh, I was safe. <laughs> it was a little sketchy because, uh, I don't know, I was worried there's going to be kind of, you know, other people coming in here because it, <coughs> it's such a good place. There's some graffiti on the wall over there, and we're, there's like a coat and some old can over there and some bottles over there, but yeah, nobody, uh, no, didn't see any person. There was a dog barking uh, at night and a rooster kind of crowing from over here in the morning, and just the way the, um, the sound echoed in here was kind of, it was pretty weird. It was like all metallic. Uh, ringy kind of sound, so it was a little spooky, but yeah, overall pretty good. The floor was a little hard, but the air mattress worked fine. So yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with how this worked out. It's a pretty good little place. Um, also had a pretty good day yesterday. So after I I filmed that video in the um, in the park after I just woke up and my stuff was all wet and muddy. So I basically just packed my tent up, like pretty wet, and went riding. Um, got into Modena, I found a little public fountain to splash some water on my bike and get a bit of the mud off. So it's pretty mud free now, it's pretty all right. Um, then I went to, there was one kind of farmer's market in, on, just on the, in Modena, basically right outside the old center. And um, asked for one pair, and the guy just gave it to me for free. <laughs> that was nice. He um, uh, gave me his business card because he does, um, said he does, you know, aceto balsamico, so um, like balsamic. But I learned later, so then uh, an hour or two later, I was stopped in the next town, uh, Formagini or something, Fromagini, Formagini. Um, and. They had, they had kind of like a whole kind of Sunday market going on too. So I stopped and got some bread and some um, porchetta and some uh, some cheese. I, forget, I think it was I said sheep's milk cheese. I forget, pecaro or something. Um, and I was having a little sandwich of that. And um, kind of a really nice couple with a, a small kid kind of started talking to me uh, from across the table. And they invited me to like offered me a shower <laughs> so I was like yeah definitely I'll definitely take that um, and so I went to their place and had a shower and then um, they kept offering me like coffee and like a little um, kind of liquor that was like licorice flavored um, apparently kind of like a, a specialty of like Ravenna like the the Adriatic seaside area here and so that was really good and um, and then yeah, they they had some real um, balsamico, some real acetate balsamico, that uh, was really good. It was really different from like the balsamic vinaigrette I'm used to, which is like really runny and mostly just tastes like vinegar with a bit of extra flavor. This stuff was really really thick and sy syrupy, and it was uh, like very yeah, very dark, very thick, and uh, kind of pretty sweet taste too and they just poured it over some chunks of like uh, Parma Reggio cheese like some good Parmesan cheese and that was really good and I said you could also put it on like ice cream and strawberries and like just um, instead of a pasta sauce they said like you can just cook up like tortellini and just put the balsamic balsamico straight on that which I thought was pretty interesting um, so yeah that was a good afternoon and then I got biking again and 
It rained for a little bit while I was biking, but I managed to basically hide out under a gas station. Uh, it was an unmanned gas station, so I even was able to kind of like pull my tent out, spread it out a bit. It dried a bit under the, the gas station roof. And then the, the rain cleared up in, I don't know, half an hour. And um, I was able to come and find this place before it really kind of started raining again. Um, so yeah, that's the bike. Pile of industrial garbage right here. A tent. Mm, yeah. So it's all pretty good. I got, um, actually, so I, I only made about three kilometers of progress towards Milan yesterday. I started out um, in, you know, in Modena. At, I think Google Maps said I was like 191 kilometers away uh, from Milan and so now I'm 188 because <laughs> I basically, I didn't, uh, I didn't do too much biking yesterday because I had the, the long break in the afternoon with the couple. Um, <clears throat> and also basically most of my uh, biking was done perpendicular to Milan, like I went down um, towards Sassuolo from Modena and then even a bit out uh, kind of further back because they said there was a Ferrari track um, in a town that was like basically a bit kind of away from in the opposite di direction from Milan so I did a little detour that way. So I probably still did, I don't know, 20 or 30 kilometers on the bike, but I, I only gained three kilometers towards Milan. But I still have um, five days before I, I can book the hostel there. So uh, I think it should be pretty easy to do 180 kilometers in five days. No, it'll probably be more like 200 because I, I won't be taking like the straightest route here. But we'll see. It's pretty flat. So I think... Basically, I was looking uh, to, towards Parma today is about 50 kilometers, but it's, um, it's mostly downhill from where I am now. I think I climbed a little hill just coming over the river from Sassuolo here, so. Um, yeah, so it should be all right. 